Businesses across the country are struggling to stay open as owners are faced with worker shortages, inflation, supply chain crisis amid the COVID pandemic. And joining us right now to share his thoughts on this and much more is the former chief executive of CKE Restaurants, the parent company of Hardee's and Carl's Jr., Andy Puster. Andy, great to see you. Welcome to the National Desk. Thanks, Shan. Good to be here. So after the dismal September jobs report was released, President Biden did make the case for his infrastructure and social spending bills as a way to regain momentum. And you reacted on Twitter saying, quote, the problem, POTUS, is a shortage of workers, not a shortage of job openings. Neither government spending intended to create more jobs nor government spending that discourages work will solve that problem. And you know, Andy, a lot of economists believe it's ridiculous to think the government can reduce unemployment by priming the pump with spending programs. Talk us through this. Yeah, sure. You know, when, when you come out of a normal recession, what you normally have is a shortage of jobs. People want to get out and work. And so you, you have at least some justification, some argument that government spending could get the economy uh, reignited. Coming out of this pandemic, you know, we had, we had, a ton of job openings. We had plenty of job openings. There was uh, every business was looking to hire because there was this increased demand during the pandemic because everybody got checks, everybody got money. So people had money, they were ready to spend it. The biggest mistake you could possibly have made was that $1.9 trillion spending bill last March, uh, which again, juiced demand and encouraged people to stay home because it sent them more checks and gave them that $300 a week bonus. And what you ended up with was a lot of job openings and nobody to fill the job opening. So the question is, if, you're, if your problem is there's two, you got a lot of job openings that can't be filled, how on earth does more government spending designed to create more jobs help solve that problem? Well, it doesn't help it at all. And then they do this, the second most stupid thing you could do, which is a lot of programs like the child tax credit, increasing SNAP benefits, which encourage people to continue not working. So they've really done the two things you would you would not do to solve the problem they were facing. And some of the hardest in industries, Hardee's, Carl's Jr., all these fast food places, all these restaurants, you are predicting this worker shortage could fundamentally change the fast food industry. We already reported even this morning that some industries right now, specifically restaurants, are using robots to help out. And I just read also that Cane's fast food restaurant. They've been asking corporate staff to step in to cook and serve food. What do you make of all this, Andy? Look, if, if you're in business, you're going to do whatever you can to survive, whatever you can that's legal to survive. And if you've got a labor shortage, and we've got a very, very serious labor shortage. I'm up here in uh, Traverse, north of Traverse City, Michigan, where we spend the summers. And the McDonald's franchisee in this area, I've seen three or four McDonald's restaurants with big signs out front offering to, to start people at $21 an hour. You know, this is people are doing whatever they can to get staffed, but you've, but you've got to cut back on your expenses if you're going to survive. These restaurant businesses have very small margins, maybe three, two, three, four percent profit margins. You can't absorb those costs, so you have to pass them on to consumers. So you want to keep them as limited as you can, and you do that by focusing maybe on drive-through if you have one, or on a delivery service if that's available. So you don't have to keep the, the dining room open and maintain so you have lower, lower labor expense. And then you raise your prices and that's how you try and stay in business. So we're seeing inflation with a cutback in, uh, in services at all these restaurant companies. A lot of businesses have tried to raise wages, haven't had much luck in track, attracting uh, employees, unfortunately, nope. just like you have seen right now. What are you hearing from business owners when it comes to the worker shortage? Uh, you know, I, I actually uh, spoke to about a dozen uh, people who own small businesses or run uh, large companies with a bunch of franchisees, so a bunch of small businesses. And the, the one recurrent theme seemed to be that we damaged the work ethic during the pandemic, that you're now, it's difficult to find people to work, particularly young people. And when you do find young people, well, you know, I can't work weekends or I can't work nights or I don't want to work full time. So they're really seeing a different reaction from workers. You've got really almost a generation of kids who, uh, you know, graduated from high school or college in 2020. And for the past 18 months, they've been sitting at their parents' homes, uh, playing video games and collecting checks. And now we shouldn't be encouraging them to do that. We should be encouraging them to take advantage of the opportunities that are out there uh, to become financially independent and to earn the self-respect and dignity that come with a job. 
But after 18 months of, you know, this government largesse, really a, almost a government guaranteed income, uh, we really are seeing a different reaction from young Americans than we saw even a year or two ago. Eddie, I'm just curious, uh, as we wrap this up, what's your advice to small businesses? How are they going to uh, survive the supply chain issues, the, the worker staff shortage, and then also the rush during the Christmas holiday? What's your advice to them? Well, the, the number one thing is do everything you can, and, and businesses do this naturally, do everything you can to reduce your expenses. You've really got to cut expenses because you're not going to be able to pass all of these costs on to the government. The second is be careful how you vote, uh, because if you've got if you've got a government out there that thinks they can use the pandemic to, to change the American economy to, to to reverse policies that have been successful for years and years, they want to address a worker shortage by creating more jobs and discouraging people from working, maybe the wrong party's in charge. And we need to pay very close attention to what's going on in the economy and politically. Andy Puzder, great talking to you this morning. Hope you have a great week and hope we can catch Thanks. up again soon. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jen.